Now I have over 500 hours in Warno and today I want to bring an end to the question of which is better, Warno or Wargame. Now since it's getting nice and warm outside, some of you might venture out to touch some grass. But what if I told you you don't have to leave your RTS games at home? Huge thanks to World War Armies and Hype Masters for sponsoring this video. World War Armies is a free to play classic RTS inspired by games like Company Heroes and Command and Conquer. It features great 3D graphics for a mobile game of this genre in which you can choose to play as Germany. Morocco or the Soviet Union with more than 70 units in total. One thing I really like about it is that it's an online PvP game, so you can play against players in a 1v1 or even in a 2v2 setting on various types of maps. In terms of combat, it is of course a little bit arcadey, but that can be really good actually if you're looking for a quick fix. So it might just be the mobile game for you. If you want to try it out for free, go to the description, try it out, and you might just have something fun to play on your phone. But that said, once again a huge thank you to World War Armies and Hype Masters for sponsoring this video. I hope you guys enjoy the rest of it. Now I entered the war game series when Airline Battle came out, so that will be since 2012-2013, and never failed to get bored enough to permanently move away from these games. When Red Dragon came out in 2014 I was hooked and currently I have over 1700 hours into it. So from an experience standpoint I feel like I am at a good spot to make this comparison between the two games. I want to start this off by saying that a lot of people are unable to filter out nostalgic feelings when comparing an old game with a new one so I will do my best to not be biased towards one game or the other and give you my honest content creator point of view. Now let's start with comparing the era of both games. Both games are set in the Cold War era, with War Games set in 1991, while Warno is set in 1989, and both games are built around the Cold War Gone Hot scenario and push you into World War III. You can take control of both NATO and Warsaw Pact forces and clash against other players on various types of maps. I will focus on five things in this review. Graphics and special effects, single player, AI, gameplay mechanics, and longevity. Now in terms of graphics, of course Warno being almost a decade more recent, takes the win here. The unit models look great in both games, but in terms of in-game assets like buildings, vegetation, lighting, random models and also map features, Warno takes the win. The same is true for special effects such as audio and also ambient sound, but also explosions. In Wargame, all the buildings simply look the same and it doesn't really make the urban aspect of this RTS game that's enjoyable, while this has been a huge focus in Warno. Not only are there more maps that make you really enjoy urban combat, it is also a treat to look at. In terms of map design, I do have to say that initially Wargame had the better maps, but Eugen has been releasing some really interesting ones in the last couple of months and has caught up quite nicely. Eugen has already focused greatly on urban warfare and released a map that was almost fully dedicated to that and have also been working on a ton of tweaks in this aspect of the game and will be releasing a new urban map very very soon. In terms of single player content, Wargame Red Dragon had a really fun couple campaigns that you could play through on your own in scenarios ranging from a Korean War to one against the Soviets. Now the main issue with the campaigns was the AI. It always felt repetitive to play against the AI since it would simply buy as many units as possible and fast move towards your base, so it didn't really feel like an in-depth strategy game in those moments. In Warno, the AI is slightly better, it does still kind of try to rush you, but it does this with more of a, of a mixture of units and it does actually resemble the gameplay of certain people that I know. The campaigns in Warno haven't been added yet, but they will be similar to the Army General campaigns in Steel Division, which in my opinion was a great upgrade compared to Wargame Red Dragon. Besides that, there will also be co-op in Warno in the campaign, so you can go through campaign with a friend. Now let's look at some gameplay mechanics. A ton of quality of life improvements have been made that greatly enhanced Warno compared to Wargame. For example, the line of sight tool from Steel Division was added. On top of that, tanks can now deploy smoke, which was initially not possible. And somehow I almost forgot, but the ability to give your units orders before the game actually begins. And this is really one of the biggest quality of life improvements in Warno. A ton of infantry classes have been added to the game, which makes infantry gameplay not as linear anymore. In war game, you basically only had special forces, shock troops, and regular forces. While in Warno, there are special forces, airborne units, shock troops, reservists, guard units, units that receive less suppression when nearing IFE, units that are resolute and thus more eager to fight and taking less suppression and so on. This adds a lot more depth to building your battle groups and makes infantry much more specialized rather than being a Swiss knife 
for any scenario. Other mechanics that in my opinion have been a great addition to Warno is the fact that commands don't need to be left in conquest zones to keep it captured. This was a huge issue since it promoted arty sniping of commands. On top of that, the mechanism that command units can buff nearby units, together with military police that removes unsteady traits and helps with suppression recovery of units nearby, gave a lot of units many more additional benefits and perks. Now in terms of longevity, I believe a lot of it comes down to how much content is released and how steady these releases are. Wargame Red Dragon had a nice amount of content released long after its official release, New nations were added quite frequently. For Warno, the amount of content that is promised to be released, such as the Army General, more single player missions, and more nations, will definitely keep the game alive for a while. And not to mention that there is modability. I haven't really taken a deep dive into the community driven modding of Warno, so I will save that subject for a separate video, since I don't think it would be fair to compare it in this one, simply because I'm not really educated on it yet. Now, I love both games. I like Wargame Red Dragon for its raw gameplay, and honestly, feel like a couple of the maps are more interesting than the ones in Warno, but the most recently added maps of Warno have been a really nice addition and brought them both to roughly the same level. In terms of gameplay, special effects, sound effects, etc, Warno takes the win, hands down. And this isn't something that should be taken lightly. A lot of gameplay mechanics were added to Warno that a lot of Wargame players also really appreciate and would love to see in Wargame, and when I go back to Wargame I really miss these mechanics, so that alone says a lot. A lot of it comes down to nostalgia, and the fact that Eugen systems moved away from Cold War Modern Age and went into World War II with the Steel Division series and also released a slightly more arcade RTS like the Act of Aggression and I feel like a lot of Wargame fans felt like Wargame Red Dragon was a safe haven and just stuck with it and felt a bit distrusting towards new titles but my honest opinion is that Warno is better for many reasons that I have listed in this review so give it a shot you can always play and enjoy both games at the same time, just like me. Limiting yourself to a decade-old game just because you don't want to betray it is only going to hurt you.